a very important role that a business entrepreneur, a businessman plays today, a business owner plays today, is organizing funds, is raising funds. As CEO of a company, you make presentations to convince the top management to release budgets. As uh, uh, in the armed forces, you convince them. With the government department, you have to convince them. What I want to drive as a point is, each person today needs funds for expansion, needs funds for survival. He needs to keep making presentations to different organizations. It might be a banker, it might be a private equity holder, uh, supporter, it might be anybody. You need to do a presentation and you need to convince the other guy why you need the money and the person needs to believe in you that you are going to take away 100 rupees from him and multiply and give it back to him. Multiply and give it back to the source from where the funds come. So this is one role which every entrepreneur is trying to play. He might not be proficient in that, but he has to play it. So what are your tips in such a situation? So, um, so let's, let's just step back a little bit and, and basically address this question in a different way, which I think will be a broader way of addressing it, is the how does a person sell? Because after all, when you're seeking funds, also you're selling. And then private equity, you get so many bright guys who come from these nice colleges and all. But essentially, some of them manage to sell themselves, their idea, their concepts, and so many others don't manage to sell it. So I don't think an eBay was an original idea. I don't think uh, Google was an original It's how they managed to sell it better and get better funding. So it's, a, it's again a question of sales. How, how do you manage to sell? Now there, I, I believe that in any kind of a sale, there are in any organization itself, in one single organization itself, in one single sale itself, there are four kinds of uh, people you are selling to. So there will always be a person who is the economic buyer and that economic buyer is the person who decides that for this 100 rupees investment, I am okay with 120% returns or I am okay with returns of nothing but a feel good factor in terms of CSR because the valuation may not necessarily be in money, it could be in various other things, right? But he is the economic buyer. There is a champion, in the champion buyer in the organization who wants to champion that cause, not necessarily from you. He may champion that cause and the person may end up buying somebody else's, your competitor's stuff. But he will champion that cause. The third buyer is a technical buyer. The technical buyer will always try to demonstrate how much he understands about that thing. And it's most of a, more of a technical head button. It, it's got nothing to do, he doesn't have the economic clout, he doesn't necessarily believe in it. But he's a technical buyer whom you have to get on your side and convince that yes, from a technology point of view or from state of art point of view, your idea is better. And finally, you have the user buyer who is going to use your service or your product. Only thing that person is interested in, right now I go home at 5.30, will your service and solution make it 6.30 or 4.30? That's it. He is not interested. Now, each one of these stakeholders has a very important part to play in the entire sales cycle. Whether it's selling for funds, selling for solutions, selling for experimentation, selling for giving it a try, selling to become your first anchor customer. All these four avatars will be found there. And I think CEOs need to make a distinction of the pitch to each one of them. The second, I think, uh, and a more crucial point is, decision makers are also of different types. There are certain kinds of decision makers who like to take big, bold decisions. Uh, they want to do it for the first time. If somebody else has done it, he is not interested in it. The moment I make these words, you know one or two people I am talking of. And straight away, you know, somebody in the audience will name, yeah, someone like this person. You know, larger than life, he'll buy aircrafts, then he'll buy something else, he'll do that. Those kind of people. There are some other decision makers who will make a decision only after careful calibration, who else has done it, what is the rigor, has it been tried and tested. Now what the CEO or rather his sales team has to do is to make sure that he is aligning his pitch or her pitch to the kind of decision making that the decision maker follows.